Welcome to uh, Classic Picks of 80 Sticks. And um, I'm Kirk. I'm on the near side here playing Ben. I'm using the Wilson Jack Kramer Pro Staff. What I'll be doing with this uh, video and other videos where I'm hitting with someone is to showcase a particular racket that was used in the 1980s. Again, this is a Jack Kramer Pro Staff. 69 square inch head, wood racket. It was actually, it actually came out in the late 60s. And it was pretty well known in the 70s and 80s, especially when, when uh, players like McEnroe used it. Um, so this game that we're playing is called Tug of War. And if uh, you don't know this game, it's basically, uh, where both players start at five, and if you win a point, um, one player who's going up, or well, one player is going up, one player is going down. And if the player that's going up wins a point, they go to six, they win another one, they go to seven. But if the other player wins a point, it goes back to six. And so the player going up is trying to get to 10, the player going down is trying to get to zero. First one to do that wins. So it's almost like, um, I know many of you may know the drop game, you know, let it go three times, hit it three times, and then ball's live, you try to go to 11 or 10 or something like that. This is kind of like that, um, but it's tug of war because it goes back and forth. So um, going back to the Jack Kramer Pro Staff, um, I want to talk about some of, it, some of its uh, playing characteristics. It really feels nice when you hit it in the center. And um, there's nothing like the feeling of, of hitting the sweet spot in a wood racket like this, especially with its weight. It's closing in on 400 grams. It was something like 395 grams static weight. So it has had a ton of pl uh, plow through. That was in a game, the tug of war game. We're going to start another one here with Ben on the near side. By the way, Ben's using a Wilson Blade version 7, 1619. Uh, we um, recorded this right after Ben was hitting with the uh, Wilson Ceramic, which is featured on another video. Um, surprisingly, the, the racket, you can get power, but you really have to work to get it. Um, you can't be lazy or uh, the ball is going to land shallow. You're going to see a lot of my balls land shallow, and, and Ben's going to take advantage of it. Another thing is that um, on that point, um, Ben took me out wide, and um, the racket, if you don't hit it in the center, is very unforgiving. I mean, it's not, it doesn't hurt your arm, it just doesn't have any power, it's, it completely dies. So, on that previous point, uh, that ball I probably could have uh, gotten it back. I mean, not as a good shot, but at least get it over the net. Um, that time I, eat, I didn't even come close to reaching the net. Shot in. Now, um, my strokes are pretty pretty flat. Um, I think it kind of works with this racket. It, you can produce spin, um, but I don't think modern hitters are gonna enjoy it too much because the head's so small, 69 square inches. Um, and it has a really tight string pattern. I think, uh, what was it? I have it on my other video, the string pattern, it's like, like, I think it's 18, 19 or something close to that, in a 69 square inch head. That means the, uh, the strings are really close to each other. It's funny, these videos, um, and uh, at the angle that, that this one is being uh, recorded at, it looks like everything's in slow-mo, like when you're hitting the ball live, it seems like it's going a lot faster than it is in this video. Shot, man. 
Another thing is is Ben covers the port so well. He's super fast. It's really hard to get anything by Ben. Um, right when you think you have a winner, the ball's coming back. Shots are pretty shallow, landing at or before the service line, and that's what happens. Get punished for those short shots there. This particular uh, tug of war game, I think, was like 20 minutes plus. Ben and I have had tug of war games that last 45 minutes sometimes. I like it because you get a lot of a lot of hits in, a lot of balls, and. Um, Drawback is obviously and the serve's not there. We usually play a few games of tug of war. If we're not playing sets, we usually play a few games of tug of war, then some tiebreakers to get the serves in, the returns in. The aspect that if you're losing in tug of war, you could come back and win it. Like that, that kind of mimics, uh, you know, games where you're you're at deuced, you come back, or you're like love forty and you come back. Uh, that was a winner, um, but you notice that uh, the angle was there, but the the depth was really shallow. Attribute that to to um, the uh, you know the challenge of, of getting depth with the racket, especially if you don't use it all the time. Jack Kramer Pro Staff. Um, why don't you share some of your experiences with it in the comment section? In the other video on the rocket, I, I mentioned how I obtained one of these Pro Staffs when I was ball boying at Stanford. Um, I used the racket when I was, I don't know, somewhere like 10 or 11. Um, and it was a racket I used before I switched to a mid-size racket and eventually to graphite too. So th this, this racket was, nice shot Ben. Again, a shallow, a shallow shot by me and Ben took advantage of it. Um, pro staff. As I recall, and I could be wrong, but um, I remember that being like one of the last bundle of wood rackets that people were using before, you know, everyone switched to a mid-size graphite racket. And uh, nice shot, man. Nice working point. Um, 
I recall that occurred around 82, 83 ish. You guys with more. Um, oh, that was just terrible. Um, you guys with more knowledge about that, uh, you can comment on that. But I would estimate around 82 ish, 83 is when, you know, a lot of people started switching. I mean, there were some people switching before. Graphite existed before that. People were uh, using different. Graphite was in wood rackets too. Um, in the 70s, um, but really kind of the big migration occurred in the earliest 80s. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it.